Amen. To the judgment, to death. to resurrection life. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's go ahead and take up our offering. Um, welcome. If I hadn't told you this morning, happy Mother's Day. Thankful, grateful for this occasion. All the mothers in the house, honor and respect unto you. Amen. That's what God is doing in your life. Um, thankful for those mothers who are here with us today. Amen. We have a special something coming here this way. Amen. Good morning. You're looking beautiful this morning. Amen. I got my baby looking pretty. Amen. Oh, it ain't Father's Day, but I feel like it right now. You got a special song for me? Okay. So put it in E flat. <laughs> Amen. I'm sorry, y'all, bear with me. I just had the song not too long ago, so I just forgot it that fast. Um, Lord, I feel so bad now. Um, leave me with something, Joshua, and I'll, I'll figure it out. Just start playing something. A gospel song that you know I already know, too. I know plenty. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, by the way. Blessings. I gotta thank you, Sue. Hey, 
mercy, but I want to say thank you, and I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Hey, hey, it could be you, no clothes, with no food, and no home. It could have been me. Thank you. No help. Thank you. With no one else. Thank you. But I thank you, Lord, thank you. for all of my clothes. Thank you. And all of my food. Thank you. I thank you for my child, Lord. Thank you. And all that you do. Thank you. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all oh, you done for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I gotta get my clothes fixed now. She got me all spilled the shirt out. But guess what? Wasn't that beautiful? She made them words up as she was singing. Amen. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how talented God folk is. You understand what I'm saying? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. It couldn't have been no better. It couldn't have been no better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gigi. Bless you. Did you get your, did she get her? Hey, Jamari. Did she get her gift to go? She got to go. She going to come and get it. Okay. She got to go see her, take the baby to see her grandma. We understand that. Amen. It's, ain't, it's not Father's Day after all. <laughs> but it's coming. Amen. Sister, Sister White, would you come and thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father. We can't thank you enough, Father, for all that you have done for us. Lord, right now we thank you for this opportunity to give. Thank you, our Heavenly Father, for supplying all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, our Heavenly Father God, Lord, for giving unto us in an overflow that, Father God, we'll be able, Lord, to give unto others. Thank you, Lord God, for meeting every need, for truly you are our provider, Father. You say as long as there are seed, time, and harvest, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed, time, and harvest. So we thank you, Father, for the seed that has been planted into this house. We thank you, Lord God, for the harvest, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for hearts, our Heavenly Father, set on giving, Lord God. Father God, Lord, we ask that you would increase every person in this house, Father, that we would give more and more to the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord God, for money coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We thank you that you have men lined up to give unto this ministry, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we will never be broke, we'll never be hungry, we'll never be without. Because, Father, we look to you. You are our giver. You are our provider. You are our source, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that everything that we have, it comes from God himself. We just want to say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Amen. Now, it's Mother's Day, and I know, okay, time is far spent. We got to sing one more song, though, for my grandmama. Amen. We come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. That's how to be marching in. Trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. 
singing oh oh oh, oh won't turn around we come this far by faith come on one time we come this far by faith leaning on the lord y'all ain't with me now trusting in his holy word he never failed me yet singing turn around we come this far by faith you can't forget where we come from now amen amen my grandma and them raised us and dealt with Jim Crow and some more folks on them hymns right there you understand what I'm talking about they wouldn't turn around we thank God this morning for our dear mothers who have gone on before us. So glad I had a praying grandmother. And a praying mother too. This morning, I'm going to be before you long. I want to send you off to spend time with your family. Um, but I want to just share a little word of encouragement. Last week we were talking about the issue of listening. And you know that God is always able to help us see how we continue to make sure we get whatever he wants us to get. And so we want to look at a dear sister in the faith who was uh, listed in the halls of faith of Hebrews 11. So we want to go to the book of Genesis, chapter 18. Genesis, chapter 18. Last week, God was dealing with us about listening. He took us to a very good passage of scripture in Samuel, chapter 15, about Saul and how Saul was not a good listener. And we, we all were blessed by just remembering how God um, brings us into understanding what he wants for us. So this morning as we um, take this time to, uh, to look at the life of Sarah, I want to remind us a couple things that God shared with us last week. Number one, that listening and hearing are not the same thing. Amen. Hearing is an automated response. Everybody hears. If, you, if I just be quiet for a minute, tell me what you hear. The fan. Amen. But just a few minutes before that, you really didn't hear the fan. Why? because you weren't listening to the fan, you were listening to me, amen? So listening is something that we can do intentionally, we can learn to do it. If we can ignore the sound of that fan, even though it's, he, if everybody can hear it, those of us who have a listening ear can shut it out, amen? Oh, I'm preaching already now. You can shut it out and hear what the Lord is saying. So the same way we can shut out that fan, is the same way you can shut out the noise of the enemy in your ear. Amen? And focus your attention on who? The Lord. Are you with me now? But now, if, you're not, if you don't train your ear to hear, then what you'll be picking up is all the background noise. Anybody have a, a, one of them new headsets, the wireless headsets? Anybody got a set of earbuds or these new headsets that you wear now on your phone? They make them so that for some reason they pick up sometimes more of the what? Background noise than what the folks are saying. Amen? If you're talking to somebody in the car with the window down, you can't hear nothing they're saying because all you can hear is the wind. Sound like a storm. 
You hear music. You hear a ding way down the street. Ding, ding, ding. What is that? Somebody's car door open sounds louder than the person you're talking to because some reason this world is, is keen on the background noise and, and shuts out what you should be hearing. Amen? Our ears are like those ear, earbuds where we pick up mostly the background noise of the world, the, the things that's on the television and the radio, the things that are being said about us that's not going to be beneficial. We hear all of that. But somebody trying to give you good instruction, we miss it. Amen? Somebody say listening. So listening is important. We saw last week that listening is important because you cannot obey without listening, right? That if you don't, don't learn to listen, you also won't learn to obey. We said that true discipleship, walking in discipleship, requires listening. Listening leads to obedience and then obedience to promotion. There's no real promotion from the Lord without listening. Anybody who will receive anything, they got to first hear it, right? How can you hear, the Bible says, without a preacher, though? And how can he preach unless he's been sent? So everybody has, a, has an instruction to, to be able to hear. When your hearing is off, when I heard uh, Sister Summer this morning talk about her nephew, that his hearing is muddled because there's something going on in his ear canals and there's, there's uh, fluid in there that doesn't, is not supposed to be there. So it sounds like he's hearing underwater. I thought about most, of, most people's spiritual life. You go and try to talk to them about the Lord. They can't hear a word you're saying. It makes no sense to them. They have something in their ears that is preventing them from hearing. A lot of time it's your preconceived ideas. Amen. Most of us think we know God. We know God without the Bible. Why do we know God? We know God because he has to be like me. I'm so wonderful, so fantastic. God has to be like me. I like nice things. So I know that God what? Come on. That's the, that's the theology we live by for most of our lives. That if I like nice things, God like nice things. God want me to have nice things. God going to give me nice things. Only to find out that when Jesus came, it was the tempter that tempted him with what? Nice things. He said, if you just bow down and worship me. And we don't know what worship is most of the time. So therefore, we don't even understand how, impossible, how it's possible for us to be worshiping the devil. I would never do that. Except... You'd rather wash your car on Sunday morning than come to church, amen? That you only give God two hours on Sunday, and if you get into three, now you're frustrated, huh? But if the, if the basketball game going to overtime, you feel like you, you just got the best deal of your life, amen? Man, we only pay, we only pay $100 for these tickets, and now the game going to overtime. It's the best thing I ever did four hours later, Amen? So, so we don't understand what it means to, to, to be, to be uh, worshiping something other than God. It means to be given your allegiance, your time. And, and, and the Bible, and the, and, uh, the, the, when I looked up the word hearken, somebody say hearken. Hearken means to listen. And when you look up the word hearken, one of the definitions means to lend your ear to. Amen? How many of us have lended our ear? You know, when I lend something... That means they got it and I don't. Amen. I have to be careful. I, I got a lot of tools. I had a lot of tools. Most of them I lent them out. Guess where they at? Still with the person who I bought or I loaned it to. Amen. But when you lend your ear to God, who has your ear? Oh, I'm going to say that again. When you lend your ear to God, who has your ear? If God has your ear, why are you still hearing all this background noise? Why everything but God is important? Hmm? Sometimes I come home, I'm tired, and my wife is in full-blown Bible study. She got Brother Belay on, and he's going, and I'm thinking, and, my, and something in me wants to say, I, ain't, I don't want that right now. Who's saying that? The devil, the flesh. Because there's something that rises up in us to stand against what God would do in your life. The selfish life, the self-life wants only to please who? Self. That's why it's called self. That's why it's called selfishness. Selfishness 
means you what? Selfish. <laughs> and so, so you're only concerned with yourself. And so, so all of this is in the way of you hearing God. It's in the way of you listening to God. And so for us, listening becomes something very vital. There you go. Let him go on back. Any of the young, youngsters, she wants to go back. She's welcome. She can stay with mama, though, if she wants to. Uh, baby sister. You want to go back, sweetheart? She want to stay out? Okay. You're fine. You're welcome to do that. Um, so now, today, we're going to look at this in the life of a, of, a, of a woman of God who we can respect very much. Amen. Miss Sarah, amen. And so we find uh, this. I think I need to read the background. So we're just going to start with verse one. Let me change. I will change my from the amplifier so we won't have so much. Let's go to the. Uh, I'm going to read from the Good News translation. Um, in the Good News translation of the Bible, it says, the Lord, uh, Genesis 18, 1, the Lord appeared to Abraham at the sacred trees of Mamre. As Abram, Abraham was sitting at the entrance of his tent during the hardest part of the day, he looked up and saw three men standing there. As soon as he saw them, he ran out to meet them, bowing down with his face touching the ground. He said, sirs, please do not pass by my home without stopping. Somebody say, Lord, do not pass me by. Amen. He said, I am here to serve you. Let me bring some water for you to wash your feet. You can rest here beneath this tree. I will also bring a bit of food. It will give you strength to continue your journey. You have honored me by coming to my home, so let me serve you. Is that you, Jerry? With your phone won't act right? Is that you? Yeah. Summer, will you come help Jerry? He's he trying he trying to get his Bible on the phone, act right. It's picking up air, picking up Scooby Doo, I believe. <laughs> it's all right. We wait, that's why we're called a family. Amen. All right. It says, uh, it says, I will also bring you a bit of food. It will give you strength to continue your journey. You have honored me by coming to my home, so let me serve you. Now, let me just say this, that, that the, 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 one of the things that we lack or that we need to bring back into uh, our society, and especially in the church, is that thing called hospitality. Amen? Amen. Hospitality. Uh, how, do you guys know what it means to be hospitable? Do you do? Do you invite strangers into your home? You do? Amen. One person. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> well, the Bible said that we should be able to uh, bring people into our home. Now, I know this is a dangerous time, and I know you're going to give me a whole bunch of thing that that reason why we need to be extra careful. Now, I get it. I believe we should be very mindful of, you know, of what we do. But that's why you got to learn to walk in the spirit. Amen. Because he says sometimes you're you're you are. Uh, yeah, you are. You are entertaining angels. Now, this is really where that comes from, because what, who is he entertaining right now? Angels. They look like men, but they're angels. These are someone from heaven. And and, and, and if I understand my Bible correctly, one of them is the in pre the pre incarnate Christ. Amen. Before he became Jesus, as we know him, he also was still in existence, right? And, and, and if you read your Bible well, then you'll see that he came to visit Abraham, amen? And so, so we believe that one of these is Christ himself that is here. So we have to be mindful that we open our hearts and minds to be those who would entertain those who are in trouble, don't turn people away automatically. Matter of fact, let me tell you something. When it comes to listening, this is something I didn't say last week. I thank the Holy Ghost. He reminded me. I didn't say this last week. This is a note you need to add to from last week. That when it comes to listening, 
that you can't be a good listener when you already got your mind made up. Amen? Especially when it comes to God. I, I Sometimes, sometimes uh, Sister Martiz, I'll, I'll go and I'll talk to somebody about something, right? I'll say, well, you know, pray about this. The Lord, I think the Lord may want you to. Oh, no. Before I can get out good, they already told me no. First thing, they hadn't prayed. Then I asked them to pray. They ain't even took the time to pray. Oh, no, I already know. So how can you know that God don't want you to do it? How can you know that God don't want you to do something when you haven't prayed and you ain't asked him? How can you, how can you already know? And you're telling me that you walk with him and you talk with him and hold me and him on good terms. But you're telling me no before I can get my question out. That means you're not a listener. Your ears are not trained to listen. The only person you're listening to is who? Because Mr. Self already said, no, we ain't going to no Bible study. We ain't going to no revival, none of that. No, we ain't doing that. We already come to church and you be holding us too long as it is. <laughs> so immediately you say what? No. And so, so this is one of the things when I left, left, last, left last Sunday, God said, you got this one. I said, I sure did. Because this is a very crucial one as we mature to the place of hearing from God. Now, with men, you might can get away with that. Amen? But even with men, sometimes God is the one telling you to do it. You see? So this morning, we had, an op we had a situation that happened where I, we do our normal routine. We had our responsive reading. I was doing like I normally do. I was flipping, and I was looking for something for Mother's Day. Some of you weren't here yet. So I'm going back and telling you what happened. So I, as I, as I, but I already felt the Lord tell me to have AJ to come and do it, uh, Sister AJ, uh, who's back with the kids now, to do it. So I knew that part, but I didn't. I wasn't sure, and I never am. I never know what responsive reading. I just kind of follow the Spirit. He'll pick me on one, and most of the time it's right on point. You know, it's something about it that makes it right on point. So I chose it this morning, but this one particular one, I probably never in my life would have chosen it because it just didn't, didn't. Oh, I didn't want feeling it, you know. I didn't feel it. I didn't. It's not a scripture I'm familiar with. But when I picked it, it was because I felt the Lord say, pick it. Stop looking for what you're looking for and pick this one. So I did. She came up and she read it. And then afterwards she said, wow, this was the scripture God was dealing with us about Friday night. Now, what am I saying? That if at any point I don't listen to God, and I try to go with my own understanding. Huh? Trust. Somebody help me out. In the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to your own understanding in some of thy ways, in a few of your ways, two of your ways, <laughs> in all your ways, what? Acknowledge him. And he would do what? So he directed us this morning, and the young lady just blessed us with the, some deep understanding of the word that was just a blessing. And she had it in her heart, and she needed to share it. But she wasn't going to call me and say, Pastor, I got something I want to share. She didn't even think it was for us. She thought it was just for her. But God made it so that she had to share it with us, and we were blessed. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot walk with Jesus when, you, when your mind is already what? Made up. The only thing your mind should be made up about is I'll go with him, with him, all the way. Amen? Other than that, you got to be listening. All right. Now, so here we are. And, and it says that they were these men, and, and Abraham didn't know who they were, but he knew that they were some honored guests. He says, so you have honored me by coming to my home, so let me serve you. They replied, thank you, we accept. Now, I'm reading from the Good News Translation. It says, six, verse 6, Abraham hurried into the tent and said to Sarah, quick, take a sack of your best flour and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and picked out a calf that was tender and fat and gave it to a servant who hurriedly hurried to get it ready. He took some cream, some milk, some meat, and set the food before the men. Then under the tree, he served them himself, and then they ate. Now, now, there's a lot that just went on, right? 
And everything that went on required somebody to listen and do what? Obey. Amen? Now, this is very important. Do, did Sarah know that these men were from God? No. All she knew was she needed to obey her husband. Amen? Now, what if she said, I'm tired. I cooked last night. Got some leftovers in there. <laughs> Hello, somebody. But Sarah was obedient to her husband. Amen? She was able to hear him and obey and follow his instruction without him having to do what? Give a thousand explanations of why. Hello, somebody. If you can't say amen, say ouch. God shouldn't have to give you a thousand explanations to get you to do something. When you feel the leading of the Lord, you ought to be moved to do what God say. Amen? But God is, he's merciful. He'll give you many opportunities. And then the servant told him to go get the most tender. He could have been thinking, I was, I was saving that for when we're going to have our family barbecue, our, our, our company barbecue. I had this fat one saved back for that. We thought we were going to have a company barbecue, boss. We had to obey. Amen? Bring the best. Because Abraham sees something that nobody else may not see, but it's going to be a blessing for the entire family. Amen? And it says, it says that they asked him where. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. They replied, thank you. We accept. Verse 6 again. Abraham heard into the tent, said to Sarah, quick, take a sack of best flour and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd, picked out a calf that was tender and fat and gave it to a servant who hurried and got it ready. He took some cream, some milk and some meat and, and set the food before the men. There under the tree, he served them himself. That's the part I want, didn't want to miss. He served them himself and they ate. He took away from what he was doing and he served the people who God sent. Amen. Sometimes we have to put aside our own agenda so we can be able to serve God. But see, all of this requires a listening ear. It requires somebody whose heart and mind. See, if Abraham already had an agenda that day, he could have easily told them, brothers, listen, next time. Yeah, next thing. I like that. Next time. Next, next time. Yeah. We, we love to say next time knowing there may never be what? Next time. But he seized the opportunity, and he didn't wait on the servants to come and serve them. He did what? Serve them himself. So we see many, many things here that come when a person has the, the right heart to serve. Now, but watch this. And they asked him, where is your wife? Why? Because usually it'd be the wife serving. Am I right? Now, so it says, he says, where's your wife? He says, she is there in the tent, he answered. One of them said, nine months from now, I will come back and your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Now, watch this. How old is Sarah? <laughs> She's about 80. She's about 80 right here. About 80 years old. And, and so she, she, she way past childbearing years. And so she's in the kitchen, cooking, preparing. But the issue is that she hearing something. She just heard now. We, we don't know that she's listening right now. But I'm telling you now, she's, she's, she, she got ears laid back like a donkey. How many of you, your wife, your husband out there with some men you ain't never seen before going to be that close and not listening. <laughs> you know she's listening, right? You know she is, she's, she done shut out everything and she's doing what? Now she's listening because she's wondering why all of a sudden we're changing everything we're doing today to do something to serve these men. But listening she is, and it says that they said nine months from now, I will come back and your wife will have a son. And Sarah was behind him at the door of the tent doing what? Listening. And it says, and Abraham and Sarah were very old and Sarah had stopped having her monthly periods. That's enough to let you know, right? 
is over with. We only having fun around here. We ain't <laughs> no hey, we ain't doing no real work. <laughs> but she was doing what? Oh, come on now. She was doing what? She was doing what? She was listening. No, right now she's listening. And so listening, we said, is one of the first steps to God using you. His, to making you one of his disciples, to use you to do something, you got to first be doing what? Now, I brought this because sometimes we think of discipleship and we think of the 12 and we think of them walking with Jesus all across Jer Jerusalem and Galilee and everywhere else. We think of them as men who God is uh, uh, doing something with, and, you know, later on, they, you know, they're going through persecution and we think of all of these things, but discipleship doesn't always take you into such danger. It doesn't always take you into situations, but it always requires listening. It will lead to obedience, and it will lead to what? Promotion. I want you to see that anytime you listen, it'll lead to promotion. It says, Abraham and Sarah were very old. Sarah had stopped having her monthly periods, so Sarah did what? Laugh to herself and said, now that I am old and worn out, can I still enjoy sex? And besides, my husband is old too. So here it is that they're old. And Sarah laughed because she think this right here, this is going to be funny right here. <laughs> this right here, I want to see this one. <laughs> can you imagine, Sister Mertiz? You can imagine. You ready? You ready for God to open your womb back up? Yes. Amen. Sister Marty says she ready. <laughs> she over there laughing now. <laughs> oh, I can't see some of y'all got masks on. I would ask y'all, but I can't see your face. I can't see where you laughing. The laughter, you know, we look at the laughter and we, we, always, we always have this negative opinion about everything in the Bible. You know, Sarah laughed at God, you know. But you know good and well, <laughs> if you was in her shoes, <laughs> a smile would crease across your face so big. And the sound may very well come out because you just be like, what? <laughs> they probably know where you at. They, be, they won't be asking where you at. They be hearing you back there saying, what? You give yourself away because this is wonderful. This is a, a thing of wonder. It's beyond human comprehension. But it only can be received through listening, right? I want you to see there's an advantage to listening. There's an advantage to pushing things aside and pushing back the other things that are going on and focusing your attention on what the Lord is saying. Let's see what happens for, for Sarah. Then the Lord asked Abraham. Now, you notice it said the Lord, right? You see, you see we've changed from, from, from these guys to now the Lord. Then the Lord asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, can I really have a child when I'm so old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? As I said, so God repeats himself. Remember we said that one of the issues with, la with, uh, with listening is that when you listen, you can ask questions. Am I right? Did Sarah ask a question? Huh? Did Sarah ask a question? Huh? Look at your Bible now. Did Sarah ask a question? School teacher, did Sarah ask a question? Okay. How do we know if she asked a question? Can. It started with can and ended with what? Question mark. <laughs> she asked the question. See, now you saw that just as her being, uh, 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 what's a good word? Sarcastic. Thank you. That's why you need school teachers in church. Uh, see, <laughs> you saw that as just her being sarcastic, but she asked a legitimate what? And I told you last week that if you listen, see, when you're just hearing, then you don't ask questions. Remember I said that I could be walking through here, I could hear Sister Mertes and Mother Mildred say something, and I hear them say, Pastor Charles, chop, 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 but I ain't really listening, I'm just hearing, and I just keep going because I don't have time to what? 
listen. But if I hear my name and I stop and I, and I hear a little bit of what they're saying, then I can say, hey, do y'all need my help? Or do y'all want to ask me a question? Am I right about it? But in order to get into that, I have to be what? Listening. I can't, not just hearing, but what? Listening. Listening allows a response. It even requires a response. Did you know that? Listening requires a response. Hearing doesn't require a response. So it didn't say that Sarah was in the tent and she heard. It said Sarah was in the tent and she what? Was listening. Oh, my God. I'm trying to help you now. Because listening is what you intentionally do. Hearing is what you do involuntarily, right? So hearing don't require no response. She can, after, after they were gone, she could say, I heard you out there talking to them guys. I thought, did y'all say something about me out there? Was y'all talking about me? See, that's hearing. Amen? But listening, huh, she asked a question. Can I still have children after all these years, even enjoy sex? Somebody say listening. So we see there's a benefit to listening, and, and even the Lord doesn't mind the question. How do I know he doesn't mind the question? Because he answered. Amen? Because he responded. Just like you respond to what you listen to, he also going to respond to you. Now, the reason why, what I was telling you about the, the whole thing with the responsive reading and all of that, I wasn't bragging because I'm saying, well, I'll be hearing God. I'm telling you a way of life that I began to realize that I need to respond to what God is saying, and I need to expect him what? To respond to me. Now, in order for that to happen, you have to learn patience also because God don't respond the way we do. You know, we expect an immediate response, but God may ask you to wait. Amen. He may not respond right then or, or what he even if he does respond, then what he says to you may not seem to be the answer that you're looking for. It may not be plain. He may tell you to go and do something. Go wash. In the pool of Salaam, go wash in the uh, in, in the in the uh, Jordan River. But you saying, Lord, but I asked you a question. Or like Nicodemus. Huh? Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, We know your teacher come from God. Cause nobody can do the stuff you do. And then here comes Jesus saying, You must be what? Now Nicodemus said, now, I ain't asked you nothing about no child bear. No, what are you talking about? So when God responds, he responds in the appropriate way. We may not have asked the appropriate question. Amen. Sometimes, even the fact that you ask a question, give God an opportunity to help you correct your question. Amen? Oh, my God. Listen to me now. Sometimes we don't know what to ask. And the Bible said that in Romans 8. Huh? He said that sometimes we don't know what to ask. So then the Holy Spirit will respond. And groanings that what? Cannot be uttered. We'll look at that in just a minute. So that we might be able to ask the right question. God is really, really interested in you what? Listening. So here we have Sarah, a woman of God who is representing all the women in the room today. She was in the kitchen doing her wifely duties, and she was listening to the Lord. And then the Lord asked Abram, why did Sarah laugh and say, can I really have a child when I'm so old? Is anything, this is the answer to a question. Somebody say, is anything too hard for the Lord? Huh? So he answered her question with a question. Huh? So I told you, sometimes the way he answer you may not be the way you want him to answer, but he will what? Answer. He will respond. So today I want you to be encouraged that you may not think that in your current place or status where God has you right now, that God is, is, uh, is really, really uh, concerned so much that he would answer you or that he would be involved in saying 
uh, anything to you. You may think that you're beneath that. You may think that God doesn't study you. You think God doesn't, doesn't talk to you. you just, so, so you feel like you got to go to the preacher. You got to come to pastor. Pastor, can you ask God something for me? But that's not true. Where you are right now, God hears you. Amen. He hears you, and not only does he hear you, he wants to respond, amen, to what it is that you're asking him. Even when the question seemed like sarcasm, even when the question seemed like the right, the, you didn't know how to put it right. Don't worry about how you put it. Respond to God, amen, because your life is important. You don't believe it? Watch this. As I said, nine months from now, I'll return and Sarah will have a son. Because Sarah was afraid. She denied it. I didn't laugh, she said. <laughs> yes, you did, the Lord replied. <laughs> she, 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 it, it immediately brought fear to her heart that how did God know what my question was when I didn't even say it out loud? It said that she asked the question what? To herself. But just like when you listen to him, guess what? Oh, my God. I, ain't, I, I, I think y'all with me now. If you listening to him, he's listening to you. You, don't, you may not think that he's listening. Sometime my wife will be around here saying, Lord, uh, we sure wish we had some cheese. And next thing you know, it'll be a pallet of cheese. We'll be like, what are we going to do with all this cheese? When, uh, when Brother Isaac started with us, he said, tell your wife to, to use the chicken prayer on the folks. <laughs> she said, the prayer said we need some chicken. And the chicken started coming. It was coming. It was so much. We couldn't. We were giving away at night. We couldn't do nothing. It was so much chicken coming. He said, you need to use the chicken prayer on the people. <laughs> Let the people come like the chicken came. Because God is listening. Amen. Amen. And then prayers, she be saying, I didn't really pray. I was just saying, Lord, it would be nice. But if you... Listen to him, amen? He'll listen to you, amen? I promise you I'm not playing with you. I'm telling you something that is very true. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11 real quick. Let's just see what God says about this woman who listened. She didn't, we, we might think that Sarah didn't do a whole lot. She didn't go up on the mountain with Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. I'm not even sure, you know, how much he told her that day because she probably would have been following him crying. But but we know that God hears and answers prayer. I'm going to go to the New King James this time. Matter of fact, let's go back to the Amplified Classic. Let's start with verse 8 for context. It says, Urged on by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and went forth to a place which he was destined to receive an inheritance. And he went, although he did not know or trouble his mind about where he was to go. How could Abraham go to a place he'd never been and not trouble his mind about where he was going? How can you do that? Huh? Faith. Trust. Faith comes by what? Ah, let's start there. Faith comes by what? See, he, he learned to not have to worry about what was in his mind because he was a constant listener to God. He never expected God to ever not give him instruction. How can I get somewhere? You ever, you ever have to let somebody send you somewhere and they only give you part of the instruction? The only reason you would do that, I mean, Isaac, we probably do that, and probably uh, 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 Matthew, because we be going on them jobs sometimes, and folks start telling you, what well, come, you know what so-and-so at, and so-and-so, when you get there, call me. Why do you do that? Because you expect to get the rest of the instruction, right, when you get to the point they told you to get to, right? Go down to, to, to so-and-so store and stop there and call me. See, that's how Abraham followed God. God told him to go this far, then, then we'll talk. Go down to Egypt. He got down to Egypt, and he, he, he didn't know how God was going to handle some things. And he, that's when he was learning how to listen to God. Amen? He made some mistakes, didn't he? Yep. Gave his wife over to somebody. 
sitting up all night. I know he was probably stressed out. You talking about somebody stressed out? He didn't get his wife over to the phone. He said, now, what in the world have I done? God, why you sent me down? I'm sure he asked God a lot. I bet that's when God, when Abraham learned how to talk and listen to God. Amen? I said, I bet he said, I never, what, allow myself to be in this situation again. Now, because if you don't learn to listen to God and God is sending you somewhere, God doesn't always give you all the instruction. Do you hear what I'm saying now? And so we call it faith, which is right, correct, that it's called faith, but faith comes by what? See, so we're, 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 it's, not that, it's not that we're saying listening is more than faith. We're saying there is no faith without what? All right. It says prompted by faith. He dwelt as a temporary resident in the land which he was designated in the promise of God. Though he was like a stranger in a strange country, living in tents with Isaac and, Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs with him of the same promise. So by faith, he, he, he dwelt in a place that was uncommon to him. He was like a, a, a temporary wreck, a pilgrim. He was like a visitor, a foreign exchange student. He was there, and, and, they, and they didn't even have a permanent residence. They were living in tents. But all of that he was able to do because of his relationship with God. Amen? Because he had this constant relationship where he built altars and, and went before God, and God would give him instruction. God would give him comfort. God would give him direction. God, well, even when he was down there, you remember, and he had left, he didn't take the, the wealth of those kings down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. He walked away. He was, he was med meditating in his heart about how he turned away all those riches. And God said, fear not, Abraham, for I'm with you. I am thy shield, and I am thy exceeding great reward. That's Hebrews 15, I mean, uh, Genesis 15. Abraham was a man who heard God, but not only did he hear, he did what? He listened. He listened to understand, and this is why God chose him, and this is why God's going to choose you to do great things. Amen? He said, for he was waiting expectantly and confidently, looking forward to the city which has fixed and firm foundations, whose architect and builder is God. He was looking for something that didn't even exist yet. How did he know about it? How did he know about it? If it didn't exist, if it was, wasn't something that in his realm re existed or something he could see, how did he know about it? Huh? He listened. He heard about it. He listened to God telling him about things that, that, that he didn't even write down, so we don't even have it in Scripture. But if he was looking for it, the only way he can look for it is he had heard about it. Hmm? I wanted to talk to y'all about here in the sea this morning, but we ain't got time. But you know that the only way you see something is through what? You can't see what you hadn't heard about. Can't see what you ain't heard about. Only what you have heard about can you see. Here we go. What is this? Chalk? Nope. Eraser? Nope. How many of you can see it? How many of you can see this? Raise your hand. How many of you can see this? <laughs> how many? Everybody can see it, right? But how you? How come you can't tell me what it is? Oh, you can't see it. Okay. See, see, some white. <laughs> see, she know it's some white because somebody told her that this color is what? See, the only way you can respond, that's why I want you to understand, you can't see. You can see it, but it means nothing to you until somebody tells you what? What it is. I, I, I don't want you to miss that now. In life, this is a principle of life, how God made it, that everything you know in life, you know it because somebody told you, not because you saw it. This is a magnet that goes on a whiteboard. That one ain't metal, so it won't stick. <laughs> it is a magnet. This, this whiteboard ain't, ain't metal. That's aluminum. It won't stick to aluminum. 
But it will stick to any other metal. I guarantee you that. Now, well, see, it sticks to my phone because you know these got their magnets in it too. You see that? So, so y'all won't think I'm lying to you. There's a magnet. But now, but now I'm, I use that because I was looking for something that you wouldn't know what it was already. See, because you think you know things because you've seen it before. You know it because somebody told you what it was before. Oh, my God. So everything you learn, you learn through what? And if you're not a good listener, then you probably have missed a whole lot, especially from God, because he speaks in a still, small voice. But the loud voice of Satan and all he urging you to do, go, 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 get it, get it, get it. All of that we know real well. Know how to tell somebody off. Know how to cuss somebody out. Know how to sweet talk somebody out of what they got. Know how to make somebody feel that big, ladies. <laughs> Am I right about it? Because you learn through what you really listen to, and you can only know what you've heard. So you see a guy, and you look at him, and you size him up. Either because he's dressed poorly, or because he's dressed richly, you think you know what you're looking at. Am I right about this? Because you heard it all before. Amen? But see, there's something in listening. And so as God brings you into what he'll do in your life, he'll do it and he'll make you know that it began with you listening. That's why this Bible said, by faith Abraham did these things. Now, did he physically do something? Yes. He actually walked into all that God said, but it was done what? How can you say it's by faith when he had to march and, 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 and lead all his uh, cattle and all his donkeys and go through situations where he was afraid for his life and all of that? Why does that seem to mean nothing? The Bible just said he did it by Because it was what he heard that caused him to do all of this. When God told him he was with him, he believed he was with him enough that when five kings couldn't destroy four kings, he, with his servants, felt like he could. Somebody say, by faith. Because he heard God and he saw that God was with him and God had never failed him. And God is looking for such people. But today we're here to talk about Sarah. Somebody say, Sarah. All right, verse 11. It said, because of faith also. Mm. See, see, this story, we know the whole issue, everybody talked about Abraham. But this says that because of faith, also Sarah herself received physical power to conceive a child, even when she was long past the age for it. It's because of what she heard. It's because of what God said. God said, I'm going to do it. Her body had to do what? Respond. Amen? Even a body that was considered what? Dead. It had to respond to the word of the Lord. He said, my word shall not return unto me what? Void. But it shall accomplish what I sent it to do, and it shall prosper in the thing that I sent it to. But listen to me now. The word of God came prospering to you if you don't what? Listen. Oh, my God. We on, we on point now. We're going to add. We're we going to see some change around here. We're going to see some change. We're going to see some miracles. It says, even when she was long past the age for it, because she considered God. Oh, my God. Amen. And somebody here is here today because your mama considered God. Huh? Somebody is here today because your mama considered God. She was up against the wall. Daddy wasn't acting right. Boyfriend, probably at that point, wasn't acting right. Things didn't look right. Huh? But mama considered God. Amen? Somewhere along the line, things got tough. I used to tell my, my, when I coached basketball, I used to coach girls. And I used to tell my girls, I said, y'all got to get tough now. Oh, we don't need to be tough. We girls. I said, no, you need to be tough because one day your family going to depend on you being tough. Amen? 
And you ain't got no way to be tough. You grow up in these cul-de-sacs. You stay in the house. You don't know. But you're going to get tough on this basketball court because one day you're going to thank me when you're fighting for your family. Amen. Fight over that rebound. Get that ball. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. I'll be on the sideline. Get it. Get it. Get it. Go get it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> Teach them how to be tough. Because mama got to be tough. How many, mama, how many had a tough mama? She might not have been big, but she was tough. I remember one night I jumped in the car. Well, she left me in the car, rather. She left me in the car. The car was a running. And, and we had that old Monte Carlo had that stick shift in the middle. And it, that ended up being my car later. So I can tell you right now, that thing didn't, that the, the, the differential in that thing was very loose. You're supposed to have to push the button down to make it jump in gear, but you didn't have to push the button down. You just bump that thing. It'll jump in gear. So, so I see my mama coming. I jump, turn around, and looking at him jumping. You know how you be running. Come on, that mama is she coming? And knocked it out of gear. My mama jumped in that car with one leg, one leg on the ground. My mama wore that scar the rest of her life with her leg dragging her ground, putting the brake on, putting that car in gear, and we were going to go out into traffic. Somebody say, Mama was tough. See, I, all y'all could tell me stories about mama, how she dealt it, how she worked two jobs, how she cleaned for somebody, she did that, how she made sure you had what you had after she, after she did all that she didn't do, that she made sure you had everything you needed. Mama was tough, and I'm telling you right now that she believed God. Amen? Because, see, it ain't enough strength in the world for mama to be able to overcome all the adversity that this world can bring. Most of us can say that mama, the Bible says she considered, that's what the Amplified Bible said, she considered God. Amen? See, considering God means that I don't take inventory of myself. Huh? Mama understand that it's not, it's not just that I got strength, it's that God has strength. Amen? That no matter what these children need, no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to consider God, and then I'm going to make my decision that guess what? We're going to make it. Amen? It said, Mama considered God, who had given her the promise to be reliable and trustworthy and true to his word. Amen. Somebody say it with me. God will be reliable, trustworthy, and true to his word. So from one man, though he was physically as good as dead, there have sprung descendants whose number is as the stars of heaven. And as countless as the innumerable sands on the seashore. These people all died controlled and sustained by their faith, but not having received the tangible fulfillment of God's promises, only seeing it and greeted it from a great distance by faith. And all the while acknowledging and confessing that they were strangers and temporary residents on this earth. And so today, as we close, I want you to understand that you're being called today, called into service, called as a mother, amen, to be a woman of faith, to consider God, not yourself. Consider what he's possible to do. And even if what God asks you to do make you laugh, ask him a question. Ask him a question. Lord, you sure you want to use me? You sure you're talking to me? And guess what he'll do? He'll respond. He'll talk to you. And you'll be able to do things, and then your children will be saying, boy, my mama show us. It, wasn't, it, ain't, the, it ain't that you the toughest in the world. You just consider God. Amen. Am I right about it? When the back is against the wall, when it seems like nothing going to make it out, daddy wasn't acting right, come on. You consider God that he's enough. His word is trustworthy. His promises are true. And I thank God today. Thank God for my mama. Amen. She had her own troubles and struggles, but she was there for me. Huh? When, when the world was all chaotic, I was telling my wife things that I had never told about me growing up. I was telling her how I used to. I always, I, I've always been a sleepless child. I always seen that it was always something keeping me up at night. My mama would always be right there, giving me some kind of remedy, trying something new, put me to sleep. Fans and Wonder up and, you know, I would always have indigestion or something. It would be something every night. Couldn't sleep, had gas. She would be up with me so many nights. And then, you know, how could I not, when she was going through her struggles, not be there for her? Amen? So, so, so go see your mama today if she's living. 
I pray if your mama not living that you got a spiritual mother. I got, I got, I got, I got uh, my mother-in-law. I got spiritual mothers. Amen. I am fortunate. If you have anybody in your life that wants to, to show you love like that, don't reject it. Amen. It's from the Lord. And, and, if, you're, and if you're a young mother today and, and this thing seems like they're just too much, remember what Sarah did. She considered God. Amen. She considered God. I, I, you know, and, and, I, and, I, and I would go so far as to say, make this a daily habit. Consider God. Amen? Amen? Consider what God's able to do. He will bring you through. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Stand on your feet. Lord God, we thank you today for your grace, your mercy, your love, your kindness, and your goodness. We believe that it is impossible for you to lie. Your word is true. Your word is full of promise. You said your word would never return to you void. It'd be like the rain that come down from heaven, go down and water the earth, make it to bring forth and to bud. Lord, we thank you that your word today is true and you are righteous in all your actions. Lord, we bless you. We ask you, Lord God, to give us hope for the future through your word. And we thank you, Father God, that you will not allow us, Lord God, to, to, to miss anything that you're doing because we weren't listening. Let us have listening ears. Let us be like Sarah who listened to the betterment of her whole family. What she heard changed not only her life, but all of our lives. And she became the mother of faith. She became the mother of the promise. And we thank you, Lord God, that she was listed with her husband in the hall of faith with those who carried forth your promise, who brought us into this new promise that we walk in Jesus Christ. She was one of the ones who carried the promise, the promised son. And we thank you, Father God, that some in this very room, they don't know who the children are that they're raising, but their children are for signs and wonders. Some of them in this room, Lord, are mothers who, who you, they're destined to be spiritual mothers, to speak into the life of some young person so that they might continue and fulfill the destiny that you have for their lives. That they may become something in the hand of God. That they may have someone who they can count on, rely on for truth and for encouragement. Lord, there's still yet mothers, Lord God, who have the power to pray. And Lord, thank God for every praying mother. I'm glad I had a praying grandmother and mother and those, Lord God, who are praying for me right now today. Lord, I thank God for each and every one, Lord God, who, who, who sees themselves, Lord, as, as, a, as a, some, some said, I'm, a, I'm your daughter and your, and your mother <laughs> because I'm a pastor. But, Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that we're able to, to I, don't, I wouldn't want them to just walk in one road. I need them as much as a mother as I do as a disciple. So, Father God, there's some right now in this room, Lord, who ha have an ability to pray, Lord God, and you have given them a heart for people. And that, Lord God, those who they're given a heart to pray for, Lord God, are fortunate. And, Lord God, we want you right now today replenish, revive, renew. Lord, we saw in your word it says that when we don't have the right words to pray, you gave us the Holy Spirit over there in Romans 8, that he would pray for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Lord, so I thank you for the spirit of the Holy Ghost that comes upon these dear mothers as they pray in things that they don't even understand, things that are beyond them, things that will go on, that will take place even after they're gone. But they prayed into it, Lord God, and prepared hearts and prepared the way. So, Lord, we thank you for each praying mother in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for every teacher. Lord God, every instructor, Father God, who is like a mother to many children, Lord, would you replenish them? 
Would you give them hope? Would you give them encouragement that they would consider God when things seem like it's just no way that they would consider God? Lord, we thank you right now for every woman of God who preaches the word of God, every evangelist, every prophetess. Lord God, we thank you right now, Lord, that you would give them strength to stand in a world where men think that women shouldn't be preachers. Some of them think that. But, Lord God, we know that it was the women, Lord God, who went to the tomb first. The first ones to tell that Jesus has risen was a woman. And so we thank you right now, Lord God, that you made sure that for those of us who want to see, we can see, Lord God. And we ask you, Lord God, to strengthen these women. We need them in this day and time. Lord, we thank you right now that they also are like Deborah, a mother in this country. We thank you right now, Lord God, they will lead us into battle, spiritual warfare, tearing down strongholds in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for every single mother and every mother, Lord God, who is a wife, Father God, in this generation that's dealing with children who are coming home, seeing things they shouldn't see, hearing things they shouldn't hear. Lord, may mama still hear you. Lord, in the midst of all of that, would you give mama, Lord God, our ear to hear God and to consider you and to know, Lord God, what you would have her to do. Father God, I thank you that the wives, Lord God, these young mothers and wives, Lord, they would be able to be uh, a good support to their husband. We need families that are intact. We need families that are whole. Lord, we need families to represent Christ. We thank you, Father, for all these things today. And we believe, Lord God, that you will give us men a helping hand to help them as they do the work of the Lord, to be a help, to be, Lord God, a, a, a guiding uh, hand. Lord God, to come alongside, Lord God, to, to stand uh, in the gap. We thank you, Father God, that we do so. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. And people of God said, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. amen again. Amen. Thank you.